Hey guys, happy holidays to you. Uh, I hope you're enjoying yourselves and keeping the stress levels low. So today we are going to do a hip opener, hamstring uh, lengthener, and back lengthener sequence. And this is great for all of us to do, especially uh, during this time of year when we're feeling stressed, but this is also great for all the athletes that I work with, you know, when it comes to the multi-directional sports, uh, working on the hamstrings and the hips. And this is also really nice for the swimmers that I work with because this is great because we're also going to help open up into the back and into the trapezius muscles and the lats and obliques as well. So you will need two blocks, a strap and a blanket, a mat and a good attitude. Let's hit it, okay? So head on back, get yourself set up. And if you need to, if you're really tight in those hips, you may want to sit up on a couple blocks, maybe one or two of them, or maybe a blanket. So you'll sit on up, and we'll begin with the legs crossed, okay? And I'll be mirroring you guys today. So right now, the left leg is in front of the right leg. So let's just find a nice little bit of extension here. Throw the shoulders up, down the back. Take a deep breath in. And now when we exhale, all we're gonna do is just walk the hands forward, roll to the front of the sits bones, let the head go, and just melt here for a moment, all right? Hands can support you. If you're not sitting on a block, you may put a block in front of you to put your head on that block. Or maybe even the forearms on a block. Breathe deeply. Good, and then slowly inhale, let's walk the hands back, roll on up through the spine, lift the chest up here. Let's go ahead and put that left hand on the ground, lift the right arm up, inhale. When we exhale, we're gonna dip over here to the left. You really want that right sits bone to press down. Shoulder blades down the back, frame your head with that right arm, and press the right shoulder blade down the back. Even feel free here to bend that left elbow so you can support yourself or extend the arm or walk the hands a little further out. If that feels better for you, just keep that right sits bone pressing down. And notice how it feels to also look up. Good for that sternocleidal mass within the neck. Awesome, slowly inhale, come all the way up. And as we exhale, we'll gently twist left now. Put that right hand on the upper left thigh, the Left hand's on the ground, but try and have a bend in your elbow, just a little bend, so we can help open up the pectoral muscle a little bit more on that left side by allowing a little bit more mobility to happen in that left shoulder. So a little bit more external rotation versus internal. We want external. Breathe. Good, and then slowly rewind all the way out. Boom, and release the legs and switch them. Okay, so we're going right over the left here. Find extension, we'll inhale, and then exhale, we'll walk the hands forward. So we're gonna do the same thing on this side that we did on the other side. Shoulder blades down your back, we're rolling to the front of the sits bones, but keep pressing the sits bones down into your blocks, your blanket, or the earth. Put a block if needed underneath the head or the forearms. Shoulder blades down your spine. Breathe. Good, and then slowly inhale, bring it up. Find that extension in your spine. Feel the six bones press down. We'll then inhale, we'll lift up that left arm. When we actually we're dipping over to the right, right hands on the ground or on a block, we're really extending with that left arm, frame your head and straighten the arm. So we're also working that deltoid and lift the chest up. Don't collapse down towards the ground. We keep lifting up. Maybe a little micro bend in that right elbow. Your left sits bones pressing down. Maybe you'll walk the right hands a little further over to the right, but keep that left glute pressing down. Look up maybe too. Good, and then slowly inhale it up. We'll do our twist to the right, inhale. Exhale, twisting right. Little micro bend on the right elbow. 
So right hands on the ground or on a block, your left hands on that right thigh, squeeze the shoulder blades together, lift the chest, soft gaze here. To the right. And keep the chest lifting, keep the length through the crown of the head, we're not collapsing here, we're nice and long. Good. And then slowly return home. Release out. Let's release the legs. If you're sitting on a block, you can pop off the block for a sec here. We'll shake it off. Shake off the legs or pummel the legs if that feels good. Get a little bit of life back in there. And then some of us may need our strap for this next part and a blanket too. And have the blanket folded over and have it nice and even. If you need to sit on it, we'll put it down. We can sit up on the edge of that blanket. This will bring a little lift from the sit bones and the hips up off the ground, which is going to definitely help to improve the support in your lower back and the hamstrings, okay? So we're gonna go a little head to knee pose, all right? So we'll start on the right side here. So the right leg can cock out a little bit to the side. We'll go ahead and bring the left foot into the right thigh. Now, some of us who may be really tight in the quadriceps, or in that knee, this flexion may bother you, so you may have to put a block or a blanket under the knee. If this is way too painful for you, just go ahead and keep that left leg straight out in front of you, okay? Now, some of us may need that strap. Taking the strap to go over the right foot. Let's keep the right leg active, okay? So you're feeling the right thigh bone press down, and you're feeling the Right toes lift up, but you're pressing the balls of the foot forward and keep that foot square, okay? So you're not letting the foot roll out to the side and we're not swimming here, so we're not going in plantar flexion. This is more dorsiflexion, okay? So your chest is lifting. You can have your strap around the foot and especially around the balls of the foot to help out with your calf. If you don't need the strap, the arms are coming overhead. We're inhaling. Exhale, we're all coming forward. We're pausing for a moment. Lift the chest up and then go a little deeper here. Maybe the hands will come onto the foot. Maybe the hands are on your uh, ankle or on the shin here. You're lightly pressing down with that left knee, the left glutes pressing down. And we're reaching our chest forward and also towards the right knee. This just really feels good for the quadratus lumborum, a deep muscle there on the back of the body there, on the left side. We're also getting a nice lengthening too of the right hamstring. Good, and then slowly inhale, bring it on up. Okay, and then I really dig this one. This is a little modified intense seated side stretch. So some of us may want the strap to go around that right foot, especially if we're not super flexible from the hips coming forward. If it feels good, you'll take that right hand and you're gonna thread it underneath the right calf, but keep the leg active. Now we're gonna lift the chest, Pull the ribs back and up. Turn the torso to the left. Take that left hand to the side of your head. Lift your chest up and then press that left elbow back and then gently begin to dip from that torso, taking the torso towards your right knee. But keep also twisting from the torso, turning it to the left and keep that right leg active and then press that left elbow back. If it's comfortable, look up. Really press that left glute down. Great for the lats and obliques. Into the back, the traps. Good. Last breath. And then slowly inhale, bring it up. Release out. And then we're going to change sides, okay? So shake it off as much as you need to before changing sides. But then we'll go a little head to knee on this side. So we're bringing that right foot to the left thigh. We're activating the left leg. Use your strap if you need it. Put your props underneath that right knee if it's needed as well. Square the torso up with that left thigh. We'll lift the chest, either hold on to your strap or the arms will lift overhead and then we come forward. Then pause for a moment, sweep the chest up, then go deeper in, okay. So here it's easy for me to grab onto my foot. 
but I've done this for a long time, so I'm pretty flexible. So don't challenge yourself to go further than your threshold. If your body says it's better to keep the hand up higher if you're not using a strap, to keep your shoulder blades down your back and keep length in the spine, then do that, okay? It's all about paying attention to small things that will help you go a little deeper. Just a little at a time, it's all you need. Really feel that right knee press down, right glutes pressing down. Try and go a little deeper if you can. Reach your chest forward towards that left foot. Good, last breath. And then slowly release, coming on up. And then either use your strap around that left foot or we're taking the left hand underneath that left calf. We're working that left form onto the inside of the leg. Again, lift your chest, pull the ribs up and back. And we're taking that right hand to the side of the head, turning our torso to the right, lift the chest, and then only if it's comfortable, we're hinging from the hips and the torso towards the left leg. Keep the left leg active. Lift the chest up a little bit more, even look up and then press that right elbow back. Really press that right knee down, right glute down. Breathe. Last breath. And release. Coming up. Releasing the legs. Shaking it off. Pummeling it if it feels really good. Good. Okay. Now. Have a block, put it right between the thighs and try, I'm not thighs, sorry, the feet. That were your thighs and then, whoa, that would be crazy. Um, but put the block between the feet and square up the feet, okay? We're gonna do a little forward fold here. But before we even get there, have your strap close by, you may need it, and just put the hands on the ground for a moment and lift the chest up, maybe have a little micro bend in the elbows. And then feel the humerus bone lift up and back into the shoulder socket. Elbows hugging, shoulder blades down. Again, check out your feet. Make sure they're nice and square. Again, so we're not pointing the toes forward, okay? We're not letting the feet roll out to the side. That's why we've got that block there. We're squaring up the bottom of the feet forward. Supporting the spine here, zipping up the core. We'll inhale, exhale, keep the lift, okay? If the hamstrings are extremely tight right now, bend your knees a little bit. And as we get into the forward fold, if you need to, you're putting your strap around the feet here to support yourself. Or if you don't need it, it's the side, arms overhead, and then we're coming forward, okay? We're finding that resting place. So here's what's really important. I'll give you guys a little side profile here. When we're working with this one, what we want to avoid is this. We don't want to collapse, okay? We want to find Length, and we're reaching the chest forward, okay? And the block is helping keep the legs active, and we're staying long in our spine. There's a little softening, but we're not looking like a hunchback from Notre Dame, okay? Good, last breath here. And then slowly come on up. Good, let's release out, okay? And then from here, you may need a block and a blanket just to help out, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take our right leg, and we're taking the right leg back here, okay? And this is where we don't want the hips to be uneven. So this is where a block can come in handy to pop up on a block around your glute, maybe the upper hamstring, and then all of a sudden we're squaring ourselves up, okay? Then from here, we'll take the left leg and we'll bend at that knee here, okay? And then again, this could be another opportunity to take another block to go underneath your left knee. And here, since I'm on the ground, this sort of bothers my foot. So it feels good if I threw a blanket underneath that leg. And now this makes this positioning a lot more comfortable. So make sure you're comfortable working into this one. So we're going for a deep hip stretch here to a quad stretch. So we'll lift the chest up and then we're gonna come forward here. Have a little more dorsiflexion in your left foot. Keep your hips square, okay? 
And this one will really feel good here for the IT band, the piriformis, the hips and into the back. Walk your hands to the right. Just notice then how it feels in your left hip and your back. Last breath here. And then release back home to center. Walk your hands back. And now we get into a good quad stretch for that right leg, okay? So if you need to, you're gonna put a blanket underneath that right knee, but we're gonna walk the hands back. We're gonna lift the pelvis up a little bit. Use your support if you need it. Underneath that left knee with the block, we'll remove the block. We're lifting the chest, tuck the chin slightly towards the chest as well to protect your cervical spine, and then gently just drop back and keep lifting that pelvis up. Some of us may stay right here. Some of us are more flexible. You might walk down onto your forearms or maybe all the way down on the back, okay? Work the shoulder legs towards each other. Again, keep lifting that little pelvis and keep lifting your chest up and reaching the chest towards the back of the room. It's going to help open the quadricep and then even get into the psoas, into that hip. Keep your core zip too. Good. This one feels awesome in that quadricep and that psoas. Mm. And remember, anytime you want to hang out in one of these a little bit longer, stay there. Right? This is your practice. Stay a little bit longer. You can always pause the video, right? Sweet, and then slowly inhale, bring it on up. Nice job. Okay, release the legs. Let's do our forward fold again, and then we'll chain sides. So, block back between the feet. Square it up, feet are nice and square. Use your strap if you need it. Lift your chest, sit up on your blanket if you need it. Inhale, exhale, we come forward. Wave the chest up and then reach your chest forward towards the feet. Shoulder blades down your back. Feel your sits bones press back towards the back of the room. Keep your feet square. And if you need a micro bend in your knees for your hamstrings, totally cool. Good, last breath. And then slowly bring yourself up. And now we'll bring the left leg back, okay? And again, if you need to, you're gonna sit up on a block. And if you need a blanket to go underneath that foot, you're gonna place it underneath the right foot. And if you need a block to go underneath the right knee or shin, that's fine too. Remember, do what's best for you. We're still working this left leg down on the ground. We'll lift the chest up here, inhale. And then exhale, we're gonna come on forward. You can support yourself as best as you need to, but keep your pelvis square. We don't wanna lean over right now to the right. And if you could take this leading leg a little further out, then that's fine too. Just be careful. And then let's walk our hands to the left. Notice how this feels on that right side. Into that IT band, the piriformis muscle. Even really reach with those right fingers, you'll get up more into the lats and obliques and the traps. And this is great for, again, multi-directional sports, but also even for the swimmers here. A little sunshine on me, huh? A little bright. Let the sun shine, shine on me, right? It's always a good thing. Good, and then slowly walk back home, lift up, and then we'll work back into that nice quad psoas stretch. Hands walk back, we wanna keep that left knee on the ground, elbows hug in, pelvis lifts, shoulders together, lift the chest, reach it towards the back of the room, maybe keep that chin tucked to protect your cervical spine, and work back as far as you can. Don't collapse in the pelvis, keep that little lift, okay? And that little tuck under of the pubic bone. Breathe. And 
Nice. Last breath here. And then slowly bring yourself up. Gently release. Shake it off as much as you need to. Pummel again if you need to. Good. And then from here, some of us may need to sit on a block or two. As so we're going to work into a little fire log, which is really great for the opening of the IT, the hips, and the back. But let's also be very careful about how our knees are. If you have any issues with too much flexion in the knee, keep the leg extended and you'll just work with one foot up high on the thigh, or again, almost working with another head to knee pose, okay? But from here, we'll go ahead and we'll try to work with fire log, the left leg to go under the right leg. And for some of us, it's possible to have the left shin and the right shin, which will actually, the right leg will come up onto our left leg, right foot will, to have the shins go parallel with each other. So then it's working like a fire log, you're stacking them up. Now, I'm one where, because of just how my uh, femur bone locks up into my hip socket, when I try to go to line up the shins to go parallel with each other so they stack on each other, my hips are torqued, they're out of alignment. So for myself, it's better to actually take my left heel back a little bit more towards my right glute. And here then, I'm able to keep my hips square, though I don't have the legs stacked exactly the same, but it's gonna allow me to open up my hip flexor a little bit deeper. So do what's best for you. Line the shins up or modify a little bit. Some of us may want to block in front of us or even put a block underneath that right knee. Bring the ground up to you. Lift your chest, inhale, and the next here we're gonna come forward here, okay? Pause for a couple moments. Keep that right foot dorsiflex to protect the right knee. We'll inhale, and then as we exhale, let's walk the hands over to the left and really reach with those right fingers here and just notice how that feels on the right side of your body. Down to the hip, lats and obliques. Good, and then slowly come back through center. And as we exhale, let's walk the hands over to the right and just notice now how it feels on the left side. Also, how does it affect the right hip? Nice, now inhale, come back to center. Pause here for a couple of breaths, okay? Shoulder blades down your back. And then I want you to assess which spot felt best for you. Did it feel best when you were walking over to the left or to the right or at center? For myself, going to the left feels amazing in that right hip. I feel like I get a nice, nice deep release there. But do what's best for you. We're all different, so it's important to listen to your body. Beautiful, let's walk back home, lift the torso up, and then from here, we're actually gonna remove that right leg for a sec, and then let's maybe scoot. You hear that scoot? <laughs> like I'm Irish or something like that. Um, take that uh, left leg a little further back, we're gonna take the right foot over that left leg here, and then we want the bottom of that right foot to touch the ground, we're lifting the chest up. That left heel may touch that right glute, totally fine. And then we're gonna inhale, we're gonna lift up the left arm, we're gonna twist to the right. Either you're gonna hug that right knee with that left arm into the chest, which will help open up the hip a little bit more. Or you could take that left elbow to the outside of your thigh, either keeping the elbow bent or arm extended. And then you're gonna put that right hand on the ground or on a block. Lift the chest up. and breathe. Notice if you're struggling with breath, you may be going too deep, back off a little bit, or find extension in the spine. 
Awesome. Release, come back home. Let's do a counter twist now to the left. And here you can stay either tall or walk the hands forward, really press the right foot to the ground, and then lift the right glute up off the ground or off the block. Great for the back, even into the hip. Do what's right for you though. And lift up, back home. Let's release out and let's chain sides, fire log. Okay, so then the right, again, leg, either the shin will go parallel with the edge of the mat and you're just stacking that left shin on top of the right shin or take that right heel back a little bit more and then put that left foot onto your right thigh. Again, square yourself up to the best of your ability. Then if you need to, put your block underneath that left knee or shin, find extension in your spine and then come forward here, okay? Take a deep breath in. Exhale, walk the hands over to the right. Notice how this feels on the left side. And then inhale, come through center. Walk your hands over to the left. Hold here, notice how that feels for you on both sides of the body. Just be observant, no judgments. And then walk back to center. Pause here for a couple of breaths. Again, be observant of what's feeling best for you today. And then you work to what part of the sequence here felt best. And whether the hands are going to the right, left, or forward. Breathe. Good, come back home, lift the torso up. Good, help out with that left leg in your release. We can maybe now scoot back that right heel a little bit closer to that left glute. Left leg over the right leg, find extension. Have your block behind you if you need it. Lift up the right arm and then we twist to the left and you take that right arm on that left leg to whatever position is best for you. Lengthen up. Shoulder blades together, and we gently look to the left or close your eyes. Good, and then slowly inhale, exhale, release, do your counter twist to the right, staying tall, or walking forward here, lifting that left glute off the ground. Remember, if something doesn't feel right to you, then modify. Good. Slowly coming up, gently releasing, and then coming onto your spine for relaxation. So use the props, maybe the blocks in the knees, the blanket under the head or in the knees, strap over your eyes, lie down, make yourself comfortable, allow for the legs to separate, the feet splay out to the side, arms, palms face up. Shift a little of it on your body to let all the tension go. Stay here in Shavasana for at least five minutes, maybe a little bit longer, and we can really get the deep release of what your body needs, get the recovery that your mind and body both need, so you can move on with your day and your training. Thanks for tuning in. You guys, create a great one. We'll see you soon. Namaste.